Williams here a few years ago. Who should I work on now? <laughs> well, we've opened a big can of worms now. Let's see what's going to happen. For the second time in four years, Ohio State's in the market for a basketball coach. Gary Williams today accepting the head coaching job at the University of Maryland. I really thought when I went to Ohio State that that would be the job. And there was nothing there that didn't meet my expectations. But I never thought I'd have the opportunity to come back and coach at Maryland because uh, you very rarely get the opportunity to do that as a coach. With the Ohio State job open only hours, the Buckeyes may have their first applicant. Former Tennessee coach Don DeVoe telling us tonight by phone that he's called OSU athletic director Jim well, Jones about the head coaching did. job here. DeVoe played his college ball at Ohio State. We talked with Cleveland State head coach Kevin Mackey today. He's echoing talk all over the place that the Ohio State job is really one of the top jobs in the country, and he's hinting that he'd be interested. And what about Seton Hall coach P.J. Carlissimo? The coach that took his team to the NCAA Finals still has four years remaining on a contract worth $1.2 million. He turned down an offer from the University of Kentucky last month, mainly because of financial considerations. Well, I've been one of his most ardent supporters in the three years he's been at Ohio State. The only thing I can say in the wake of Gary Williams' decision to leave Buckeye country is good riddance. Now, that may sound rather cruel and inhuman, but let me explain. For the past 18 months, Williams has been saying that he has one of the best jobs in the country and has no interest in leaving Columbus. Still, his name has been associated with several coaching jobs that have opened up. Instead of saying thanks, but no thanks, Williams would show some interest, at least to the point of talking with folks which had to be of great concern to Ohio State. Having rekindled interest in Ohio State basketball, he recruited one of the country's most sought-after high school stars in Jimmy Jackson. Part of his recruiting pitch had to be that he, Williams, would be Jackson's coach during his four years at Ohio State. Now, even before Jackson takes part in his first Ohio State practice under Williams' watchful eye, the coach turns his back on the young man who believed him and trusted him, and by enrolling at Ohio State, put his future in Williams' hands. Can you picture Fred Taylor doing that to Jerry Lucas or John Havlicek? Never. Never in a million years. At this point, Jimmy Jackson must be wondering who he can trust if he can't trust or believe in the man who recruited him to play basketball at Ohio State. I've been in Columbus long enough to know that Ohio State's had the kind of coaches people can look up to and believe in. Coaches with integrity. Coaches like Marty Corot, Floyd Stahl, Ernie Godfrey, Mike Pepe, Larry Snyder, Woody Hayes, and Fred Taylor. Apparently, they don't make them like that anymore.